Okay, so today the Arts Commission Committee for Anti-Racism and Equity and Metro Arts staff are joining by conference call. In a moment, we will call roll of all members present. This meeting is being recorded and will be made available to the public no later than 48 hours after the meeting. Any action items voted on during today's meeting will be reconfirmed at the next in-person meeting of the committee. So now I will be calling the meeting to order. Um, and so now I will need to do a roll call of our members present. Cheek. Present. Sarah, did I get it right? Sarah. Present, okay. Um, Alandis, we know that Alandis. Can you hear me? Ellen? Present. Jonathan Marks? Present. Terry? Here. John Royal? Present. Mario Elena? Thank you. So now I'll need a motion. Um, I, I need someone to make a motion that the meeting agenda constitutes essential business of this body and meeting electronically is necessary to protect the health, safety, and welfare of Tennesseans considering the COVID-19 outbreak and is permitted under the governor's executive order number 16. I'll need someone to propose a motion. And if you'll say your name. This is Will Cheek, I'll move. Okay, is there a second? This is Terry, I'll second. Thank you. So, um, if anyone please has any discussion or comments on this motion, please let me know. Please raise your hand. Okay, now I have to do a roll call to vote to adopt the telephonic meeting. Uh, Will? Aye. Sarah? It's Sarah and I. I swear that's what I'm saying when I say it, but it's not no. working. Sorry. Oh, I'm just... Alandis. Okay, we'll come back to him. Ellen. I. Jonathan. Marks. Aye. Terry. Agreed. John Royal. Aye. Mari Elena. I don't know if you vote or not. Aye. Okay. So moved. Um, now we'll move into our next agenda item, which is to discuss our committee priorities and goals for fiscal year 2021. Um, I don't know if you've all had a chance if you've been able to print off what Grace sent that has everyone's um that had both a committee tab and then also a, a um staff tab that has all of the kind of suggested um recommendations or uh committee priority and goals if we can I would like to just everybody who's listed I think there's um I think I counted. Um, there's about nine individuals who have responded with something. If we can just go down the list, maybe take no more than three minutes. This is my thoughts. We can discuss whether or not this is going to be helpful. But if we can go down the list, uh, for instance, Will, we'd start with you and Trey, we'd end with you and just kind of go through and see what is it exactly that you were proposing just to kind of give us a little explanation of your thoughts, but just maybe like three minutes. Does that sound good to everyone or should we do this another way? That sounds good to me. I don't know. Okay, thank you, Trey. Anybody else? 
Okay, thank you. And I guess we um in our we had talked about earlier this week, Grace and Janine and I about holding space um, every 15 minutes or so, just to make sure that um, you know if people have outstanding questions that we're not going by. So I don't know if maybe we should just leave space after each person, or do you want to? Stick to like 15 minutes. I think so we should wait till the end. No, I think we definitely should have questions, ask questions of that individual's comments, and then um, we can still do a 15 minute kind of natural break if you want to do that. Okay. Grace, do you mind pulling up that the spreadsheet on your screen? Uh, no. Thank you. Um, is that large enough for people to see? Works for me. And then we'll just go down the list. So, well, if you'll get started. Sure. So, one of the things that I've heard from a particular smaller arts groups uh, is that there is a barrier to getting money from the Metro Arts Commission. Uh, Metro Arts Commission grants out a decent chunk of money. We'd like to increase that, but um, there is a natural barrier because you have to be a five, an organization has to be a 501c3 in order to apply for Arts Commission funding. Um, I, rather than getting rid of the requirement, which I think makes some sense to have, what I'd like to do is to see if we can find a way to hook arts organizations up that have matured to the point where uh, they really could get funding. So uh, get them with a lawyer that knows how to get 501c3 status and can lay out the groundwork for what they'll need to be able to get 501c3, as well as once they're ready to do it, help them with that process. I think it just removes one barrier. The, that, that barrier disproportionately impacts uh, smaller, not well, it impacts smaller nonprofits, which I believe probably impacts um, more minority and uh, women run organizations than you know, the, the larger ones. So that's why I have that out there. Um, one of the comments in the report was that um, um search committees didn't require people of color uh and there was an implicit bias training and i think that uh we could ask the arts commission to just institute those two changes i don't think that there'd be any problem with it obviously what the what actually is implemented is important and i think that's what this group would do would be to suggest exactly what the metro arts commission would adopt um my third one was to review all Metro uh, Arts Commission programs to um, see what we would recommend uh, to change the programs to, to accomplish equity goals. What I was thinking about here was, um, you know, there are, there are a number of different um, arts programs and, um, you know, the way that they work could have unintentional impact on equity. Um, and I think just reviewing the programs, in particular the application processes, the way that they're reviewed by the Arts Commission, by the Arts Commission staff, if there are ways that this can be done to better serve equity goals, I think we should make those recommendations. Um, same with the grants process. Um, grants, grants is obviously the, the big kahuna uh, a lot of money is given out there. Uh, if there is any unintentional equity and uh, any sort of bias, we should recommend changes. I think we should be proactive on this. This or this group, I think, could make a difference. It's not obviously going to fix equity out there, but it is a first, and I see it as I see these all as being things that could be accomplished pretty quickly, and then we can move on to the more difficult challenges after we've after we've made a, you know, I think it's important to make a difference. And I know that white folks like to, white guys in particular, sometimes like to make a small change and then say we're done. I'm not proposing these four things because of that. I think there's, there are things that we can accomplish relatively quickly. Uh, I think the Arts Commission can see that we are making a difference. 
And when we come to them with things that are more difficult, um, I think that, that it'll be better appreciated if we've already shown that we can deliver results. So anyway, I'll shut up now. Does anyone have any questions, comments, thoughts regarding Will's recommendations? The first would be pretty quick to set up because the volunteer lawyers has their program set up already, so it's just a matter of funneling folks over there. Like they actually get so <laughs> sorry. I have a kind of a bridge to what Alanis just said that seems like we could create a relationship between Metro Arts and uh, ABC to institute a program that actually, we're not just sending them over there, we're actually handing off with accountability and feedback. So ABC has a fiscal sponsorship program so organizations don't have to have a 501c3, but they can get funding. That, that might work in this instance. And I say that because um, if it, it, well, it really depends on what we have to look at, look at Metro Arts kind of like granting guidelines, because I know if they use, if they're officially sponsored by the Arts and Business Council, then that might preclude anybody else from getting a grant because I think because of the EIN that's used. So if they're because they're using uh, ABC's for that. So depending on what grant it is, um, if they're applying for Metro Arts funding, then um, Metro Arts might have to change some of the policy if if they only allow one grant per EIN. And hey, this is Will. Let me say that the 501c3 requirement, I believe, comes from the things that one that an organization has to have in order to qualify for a 501c3, um, give a certain amount of credibility to the organization as being responsible as a nonprofit. Um, and, and I see that as, as part of the reason that the Arts Commission requires it. If the organization has obtained a 501c3, they have a board of directors that, that is independent. Uh, they have rules about conflicts of interest. And they have a number of other policies. They have uh, bylaws and other things that are sort of requirements for an organization to be properly set up. I think that's the reason the 501c3 is there. And my thought is, is that we don't eliminate the requirement of the 501c3, but that we do as, as Terry indicated, I, I think it, what we want to do is make sure that we identify through the volunteer lawyers for the arts an attorney that can help the organization and we make sure that the organizations actually are making progress and get qualified so they start getting funded. So uh, this is Terry, I'd like to make the suggestion then um, so we don't get bogged down in individual items in this um, sheet um, that we can star some things that we seem to have a conversation around and we can put that on a work list and come back to it. And we can do that with anything that, that we kind of seem to have a conversation around in this particular process. Sounds like a great idea. I agree completely. It feels like we're getting pretty granular and I just want to ask some questions and maybe challenge some assumptions about kind of where we are in this conversation. Um, because I think, I mean, first of all, we've had this and I'm glad, I think it's really important for us to assess what we don't think are priorities and talk through those things. So I think there are two or three things that occur to me, which is um, one, I think it's important to verbalize now that community members on this committee have spent some time naming and trying to identify and best verbalize 
aspects of how we're functioning as a group that need to be surfaced and, and discussed. As a group. And I, I, at the rate at which we're going, we will not have time for that in this meeting. And that's and we can. And so I just want to raise the question about. Um, I know that this is one of our main priorities, but I would just like to raise the question to the group. How do we want to go through this conversation today? Because these priorities are important and we need to and hold space for them. But there are a significant number of people who are on this meeting who um, have been speaking into the question of how we are functioning and um, how, and, and I feel like, it feels like in some ways what has happened is we have transitioned from art into care that there are a few unexplored questions that we want to make sure we have a chance to discuss. So I just I and I'm and I don't want to completely derail the conversation, but I just want to make sure we're open up space for asking the question now that we are here together as a group, what feels most important to those of us who have been verbalizing some frustration with how this group is functioning. Okay, so given that question, I guess, what is the answer? Or what are the questions? I guess I'm probably better. That and say, do we want to focus on priorities and table this other set of items that would be the next agenda item, which we may or may not have time for, right? Okay. And I just want in the spirit of collective, uh, collective action and collaboration and shared accountability in this work, invite folks to speak up and say what feels most important right now to you and what we're doing in this work together what what feels most important to me is is setting foundational norms moving forward in that way because i feel like we can't even get to this work if we're not talking about the norms and foundations um that's just that's just my opinion. and that's yeah. thank you john Thanks. This is Sarah, and I agree. I'd rather us kind of spend that time to think about how we want to work together, how we want to communicate together, so that when we go through these priorities, we're doing it in that way that we've all agreed upon. So, this is Ellen. I agree with that. I think we need to review the group norms and talk more about how we are functioning as a committee, which is very different from how we function as an art team. And I would add to that, that as we do this, it then gives us agency in how we're going to actually address the priorities. And there are different ways of going about this than simply everybody reading every single contribution to this. Group. The ways that we can hold this group accountable to doing work outside of the meeting that enables us to actually drive this work forward even more effectively and with more um, intentionality. Okay, so to John's point um, about setting foundational norms, how would you like to proceed? This is Terry. Um, so let me let me suggest so that we um, have a, a, what feels like a smoother transition from where we were to where we were heading. Uh, we can still go through the priorities, but as a synopsis statement, just everyone that offered something, just offer a summary statement. And then from there, so that'll take care of the agenda, because I want to make sure we respect the, the agenda because it keeps us on track. That allays us right into the uh, check in and additional, well, additional points of discussion, which is for a lot of us is the discussion. So if we can do that and then come come back, um, and if you don't mind me leading you for just a, just a little bit, um, you know, because we've talked, um, and so that we could wrap our heads around what we feel like is um, are the, the things that we need to discuss as have already been described. And so I'd like to read some of those things to see where, you know, how, how we can process through those, which is what the others have alluded to. Is that okay? 
Yeah, it's fine. Okay, yeah. cool. So, um, the, Will, then Jonathan, you would be up next with your summary statement. Yeah, thank you, Terry. I love your suggestion. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, so for me, summary, I think I was thinking more kind of high level in terms of like areas uh, or ways that we embrace this work. And so I really kind of looked at it more in terms of um, thinking about, you know, uh, policies and practices um, and how we can speak to the work that Metro Arts is doing and really guiding the evolution of that work. And then the only other thing I would, I guess there's two things I would add. One of them is recognizing that we are in a very unique moment and that we should look at the effects of the pandemic on our community and on the arts ecosystem through the lens of the work that we're called to do, anti-racism and equity and inclusion. The other thing I would say is that I, I love the idea of going through summary statements. And I think then from there, I would even argue that there are some creative ways that we can look at how to um, organize these priorities that we might find that there's some commonalities. And in fact, one thing that might be helpful is, is while it's useful to see how individuals speak to their priorities, uh, being able to see where are their common themes or buckets that things fall into that might help us see, oh, there's a lot of people all speaking to this, right? Is that, are you concluded? Okay, cool. All right, so Aaron is next in the list, but I don't believe he's on his call and I don't wanna speak for him. Um, although I do wanna call out, again, things that we're kind of as a, as a group alluding to, the, um, the first column, first cell in his has to do with what we've stated, group norms and talking about the model of how we're going to um, come to consensus, use the consensus uh, tool and function, uh, group function and dynamic, um, just to call that out. And is Megan on the call? Okay, Megan's not on the call, but actually when I looked over it, Megan, Megan's items and my items are very similar um, well, they're similar. They have very similar um, uh, threads to them. And so mine is simply about looking at, we can't know where we're going if we don't know where we've been or where we are. So mine is very much around gathering data, looking at the available information that we, we have, um, finding ways to gather more information um, I ha also have a, a piece on governance, which is what we're all kind of speaking to. Um, and training, which is, for, as far as I'm concerned, it's got to be at the top of the list for any of this to work. Um, Sarah? Sorry, Sarah. It's okay. <laughs> no, no, it's not. Yeah. So... Um, my, I think again, a lot of it is overlap with what everybody else has said already. Um, sorry. There you go, Grace. Yeah. Um, so really kind of thinking about, um, you know, community engagement, stakeholder engagement, like what's our process for doing that? How are we communicating what we're doing? Um, and the existence of care to, um, the community and, um, just connecting those dots for people, um, to let them know that we, we are out here. Um, one of my big things was around training for staff and for um, board members who haven't gone through the crossroads training. And if uh, a training isn't possible, like a formal training, how do we just get everybody to speak the same language um, and just have that shared language? I think that's really important for us. Um, and then, um, and then just like a methodology or a process. And I think this is again, just talking about what we all said around how are we creating our agendas together? How are we doing prep? together, how presenting and communicating in our meetings together. Um, you know, I know we have like formal leads, but, um, you know, having it be more of a shared process, I think is really important. Shared leadership is really important. So that was me. Very cool. 
Um, I'm, I'm so sorry. This is Mary Ellen. I'm so sorry to interrupt, but I have to leave the meeting. I just had a work emergency and I have to leave the meeting. So I just wanted to apologize for for uh, jumping out before it's over. No problem. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. I'll make sure you get the recording, Mary Elena. Grace, should we go to the staff page? Okay, Janine. Sure thing. Hi. I was waiting to get called on. Should have just jumped in. Um, so, um, I mean, mine are, are pretty simple. Um, you know, making sure that equity is um, include equity lens is included at every step of implementation. Um, also, thinking about expanding out equity and thinking about um, incorporating uh, restorative practices. So, really thinking about the power dynamics at play in all we do in our interactions, specifically uh, discipline. Um, and, uh, of course, you know, out in the community, um, in, you know, engaging with our partners uh, and expanding the work and also making sure their voices are always heard. Um, so, but if I had to sum up, it's really just that, uh, that shifting truly shifting power and truly um expanding out uh these concepts that we're talking about okay thank you grace um thank you uh so i guess i'm trying to figure out how to sum up i mean they're fairly short um so i think it's important to have sort of or I would love to have sort of input on two sides of the work that we can be doing. So, um, you know, we're in the process of changing our in, like internal meeting structure um, and ways that we can have sort of a daily constant check or things that we can go ahead and make change. Cause I know it's the long term is important, but I think there are also things that we can just sort of start doing now. Um, but I would also love to have the work of care just integrated into our workflows. So we go through, you know, it's grant season and then it's, well, I'm new. I don't know all the seasons yet, but I know that there are seasons. Um, and so just making our, our equity checks, our input, just a part of our process always. Um, and then my third, it, it's a bit personal, but uh, I think also larger. Um, I know there was kind of a, a conversation about preserving the work of the art team um, but also the work that CARE is doing now. Um, one of our co-facilitators in DIAL, um, her agency is trying to start uh, a similar kind of committee um, for their agency. And she was asking us about um, tips or insights about what they could do. And so I'd love to be able to, to share the work of this committee out with community partners um, and people who are looking to kind of integrate the same thing. Okay, thank you. Oh, sorry, that was me checked out. <laughs> okay, Trey, you're up. Yes, um, if no one has questions, I will start. Um, my first two are, are kind of centered around working with public art specifically, um, specifically kind of one of the things that we did when I first started at Metro Arts was our community um, investment plan for public art in which we identified different ways to kind of um, break that that chain of experience in the public art field. I think um, we've done a couple of things, a mentorship program and, and started to, to kind of think about different ways that we can help um, specifically artists of color who do not have um, public art experience, if we can kind of help them not only gain public art experience, but um, think about different ways that we can, you know, use our power to um, specifically uh, reach out to those artists and, and to kind of provide them with work opportunities. Um, my second one is about our process and more so our, our involvement with the community and, and that relationship. Um, and, and I've been talking about this a lot these past couple of weeks, but just 
trying to think about ways to put more power in the community's um, hand and, and kind of give them more ownership over our processes. Um, and, and I know we talked about, you know, when you ask people to do this work and, and volunteering, um, it's not necessarily, you know, a way to show someone that you value their their ex expertise and time. So also figuring out, you know, ways to to pay these people to um, be involved in in our work um, and, and making sure that we let them know that we understand that their time is, is valuable and that their resources are important to us. Um, so just trying to figure out different ways and, and things like that to to change our processes in, in ways that we have um, some leeway and then kind of similar to what Grace said is, is just figuring out a more consistent method and of checking in on this work in our our day to day operations. Um, I think w Grace and Janine and I were in a training today and, and they use that term, you know, equity lens. And I think um, for me, I think it's it's one of those words I've heard a bit too much, I think, in the past couple of years. That, but, but at the same time, it's a very valid point is, you know, just making sure that everything we do, we are asking those same questions across the board. Um, but yeah, those are my, my three items. Okay, questions, comments? Yeah, I'll It's a small thing, but I just want to note that on the spreadsheet, all of the the way that the priorities are listed, white men are listed first on the committee list. It just may be the way they came in, but it just it feels like, you know, even in small ways, we could be thinking about how to be intentional about centering the input of people of color into this process. Interesting. Um, actually, Jonathan, you I put them in, yeah, the order that they came in, um, but I would love input um, on ways I could change administrative practices to be more equitable or not even by default create sort of like a weird hierarchy feel. So thank you for, for naming that. I assumed it wasn't intentional, but it, it did happen and it had and I just felt the need to name it. I'm sorry. Please don't be sorry. <laughs> I think that's fine. Okay. Um so that allays us into the points of discussion um as some of us have expressed. Um I just sent Part of a, some notes out of the conversation that we, we being the art team, um, have had. Um, I sent them to you, Grace, in your email. Is there any way you could, if you have them, could you possibly display them? Yes, give me one second. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen so we can go back and forth very quickly. Yes, here we go. Let me pull this up, but my inbox is not on display. <laughs> I know, right? I mean, it's not very interesting. Uh, <laughs> thanks, y'all. You never know. <laughs> uh, let's see. Pop it out, Grace. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Yeah. The thing is so small. Thank you. Okay, now we can rock and roll. Um, there we go. So, first thing, first item. So, uh, so again, as, as several of us in, in our team and, and at all, at the whole group, I'm not trying to co opt anything. So, please, please feel free to pull me back. But um, just in talking, we have been concerned, um, as, as you know, we've been concerned just on group dynamics. Um, and mostly, how do we function when not all of us have the same training, analysis, shared language, shared concepts of what it is we're here to do? So we're trying to normalize that 
um, but still with the statement that training is going to be the thing that ties it all together. So that, that is still at the very top of the list. But um, so the, the things that are on what I sent to Grace and what uh, we've all kind of been trying to wrap our hands around is, first of all, sorry, wrap our minds around is, first of all, the commissioner, the commissions, the commission group, the commissioners. Um, as a tenant of the process of care to submit recommendations to the board based on research deliberation findings, we want to have a shared understanding of what the expectation is for care. So we wanted to have a little bit of discussion with an explicit statement of what that is. And so I, I guess Paulette and Will, that would need to come from you guys. Grace, can you pull up the um, of our mission? Uh, so the the guidelines. Yeah. Uh, for care. Yeah. Yep. Thank you, Maya. All right. Uh, nope. There we go. Okay. Um, is this what you is this what you're referring to, Paula? Yes, it is. Terry, does is this kind of what you're? I'm not sure. I'm. I'm know exactly what you want us to do in terms of because we have the vision and all that good stuff on here is this what you're talking about oh uh, well yes uh, both and i think we're looking for is is there a directive from the commission um is there something specific and and our team please feel free to jump in and, and restate um what i'm trying to you know, wrap words around what what is it that the commission has expressed is our explicit function, our goal. Or, and, and if there's not one, if this is if the mission is it, then that's fine. But we just we want to make sure that we are operating with the idea of what the commission is expects of us. And I guess I'd like to just say that ideally, you know, the the, the scope 1.4 scope section is where we can just at the very least look at that and say, okay, are we aligned that this is the purpose of our work here, right? Is there anything to answer there? We're missing. So then I guess the question is, Paula Will, is that that 1.4, the scope, is that what the commission is looking for us to be able to do? So this is Will. We adopted a motion to establish a standing committee of the Arts Commission to set goals and work toward accomplishing items outlined in the art team report, to establish policies and procedures for internal operations, advance the purpose of equity, work toward new ideas and work with existing art team to transition their work and include members of the existing art team in the new standing committee. That motion was offered by me, seconded by Commissioner Whitney, and passed by the commission. So that's what came, that's the official motion that came through the Arts Commission. It's up to us, I believe, to set the scope based on that. If you want to go back to the commission and say, hey, we'd like to do something a little different that wasn't authorized, I'm sure that would be uh, a welcome. Um, I, I don't mind 
us circulating that if you want to see it. I, I don't know if I have access to everybody's email. Well, if you can send it to Grace, then she can probably um, distribute it. And, and yes, thank you. That would be very helpful to have in that's, front of us. Yeah. yeah, and that's in the official minutes. So the way that, you know, Robert's Rules of Order, uh, a, a body typically enacts a, a motion, works by motion, and um, and that's that's how that's how all this got started. We had a discussion. The discussion lasted over three or four meetings, probably, and it ultimately ended up in a, a definite desire to to formalize a, an arts commission committee, um, which has turned into this committee. And so after, I don't know, it was a pretty long discussion, 30 minutes or so, um, we, I made a motion. Um, Marcus Whitney had some comments. Uh, I revised my motion and the revised motion is what passed. The only reason I, I think that I moved it was, is I'm a lawyer and I'm sitting there making notes, thinking of what everyone's saying. And I think I tried to encapsulate, incorporate everything that people had said. And then I was brought back to the commission with the I won't say I was brought back, reappointed. And then um, Caroline asked me to kind of champion this with Will as well. Okay, good. Thank you. Yes. Um, uh, our team members, community members, questions, discussion, clarification? Is getting a copy of that sufficient? For our purpose, for our understanding, I feel like what Will read and what I'm seeing in the scope, those things feel like they align to me pretty well. Okay, Grace, why don't we put all of this into the care care folder so that's all in there? Yes, I can absolutely do that. All right, anybody else? Okay, I can't see everybody on the screen. Okay, um, if so, then say something. Um, all right, so the next thing is group norms. Um, and that's probably something we need to spend just a little bit of time, you know, a few minutes discussing what we're looking for, what we need to call out besides training, which is, again, at the top of the list. Um, and I'm just going to stop there and let, you know, anyone jump in. What are we looking for when we call out group norms? So this is Sarah. Um, I think when I'm thinking of group norms, I think, um, you know, just with obviously the formalized process of now being a committee, um, I think some of the group norms that I know the art team had had um, that we really valued have not necessarily translated over. Um, and so things that I would love to kind of make sure that we incorporate would be um, like shared leadership um, and really kind of thinking about, you know, who's taking on what um, in, in our meetings. Um, I know obviously like staff are playing a really big role, which is great. And like the support is awesome. Um, just how do we kind of balance some of that out with um, some of the other kind of committee members taking leadership um, as we're able. Um, so for me, that's really important. Um, and I think just also um, just the like just the communication. And I know that that's a, a later um, topic that we have here, but. Um, I think that communication and how we're engaging with each other um, is really important. So, um, yeah, so I want to pull that out. Anyone else? I have a question. So when you say shared leadership, what does that look like for you? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so I think for me, it's really, I know that we have the opportunity to add to the agenda, um, but I think just making that process maybe a little bit clearer so that we know we can add things to the agenda as we kind of deem we need to. Um, I would say um, for me, 
it's sharing responsibility of who's going to lead the meetings um, in some sort of way. Like I do think um, I know that we have like, you know, we have a chair and vice chair, um, but I like the idea of splitting that responsibility or at least kind of alternating it so we can hear from different people, have different facilitation um, styles, kind of facilitating meetings. I think that's important too. Um, so that's that's part of what I mean as well. And, and I guess I would like to just add to that, that uh, I think one of the underlying uh, dynamics and feelings in this transition that hasn't really effectively been, been named, and, and I'd love folks to either affirm or challenge as they see fit, but it feels for those of us on the art team who have invested many, many, many hours on building this team and doing the work and doing some of the initial analyses that went into the report, um, this transition, uh, it feel like it, it feels like it took away our agency because all of a sudden we were funneled into another committee and not really um, um, asked about sort of, how, you know, there was not really an opportunity for us. There was a lot of talk about how the committee is going to function, but, and there was even an early discussion around the question of leadership at one point, but it never got brought back up, right? Um, and, and I think the fact that that hasn't really been addressed um, has created some, some challenges. Hey, Jonathan, this is Will. Um, so I had some thoughts about leadership. Um, the, the bylaws, I asked the Metro Legal Council uh, about leadership, and he said that the bylaws requir required that the committee be chaired by a commissioner. Um, and my thought is, rather than this being driven solely by Paula or me, that we establish a working procedure with this group where maybe Paula or I starts the meeting, we have an agenda and we, as chair, we would move through the agenda. But when we get to individual items like this, we have someone from the art team be a leader and facilitate the discussion. Um, and I don't really care what we call that person. If, you, if we want to come up with a title that's equally as impressive to chair, I think the real important thing is that we know that the meeting works on Robert's rules of orders uh, as far as the agenda goes and when we have items, action items. But I think the way the conversation should go is more like what you what you and I are doing right now and probably closer to what the art team did before you got shoved into these public meetings and I apologize for the stiffness of them. So what I'm thinking is, is that we have an agenda that the entire uh, group has input on the agenda. Uh, and one easy way to do that is is in, in the meeting, we'd say, hey, Grace, why don't you put so and so on the agenda for next time? Or you could send an email a week or so before she's going to put the agenda together and say, hey, let's talk about this at the next meeting. But then once we have an agenda and we're conducting a meeting, all starts the meeting, we adopt the, the COVID procedure, we adopt the minutes from the previous meeting, um, and then the first discussion item. We kick it off and Jonathan, Terry, or whoever wants to lead that discussion. I'm very game for us, us to work that way. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Thank you. And as a matter of fact, um, it's very um, congruent with what is lower on this list of things that we wanted to discuss. So I'm glad to see that we are um, thinking in similar ways around that. Paula, does that, does that work for you? Yes, that's fine. I think we can definitely do it where other people take lead in the meetings to facilitate discussion. I don't see anything wrong with that at all. Beautiful. Okay. Something also, I don't know if this would go under group norms um, or if this is around communication. I think thinking about, again, how we make decisions, I know we've kind of um, defaulted to Robert's rules, but I know that um, I think we, Grace, I think we had talked about last time that we don't have to use Robert's rules. It's just sort of what it is. Like that's kind of the go-to. Is that correct? Um, 
Yes, and I I would invite uh, Will and Alangus, our lawyers, to to step <laughs> in. Um, but my understanding in talking um, with our lawyer, our Metro lawyer, was that Robert's Rules is the default. Yeah. And that the committee can set up an alternate decision making method. Right. Um, the one caveat to that is I still think like any decisions made in this committee need the like need commission backing. Sure. Within, yeah. yeah. The, but but I believe if this committee would like to establish its own decision making and processes, that right. that's fine. Yeah, and so I guess, and that's, so I really do want to uplift that because I think something that we're trying to do, at least from my understanding as care and as previously as art is push up against norms that are kind of norms for really no reason or that they're just kind of just how we do things. And I think Robert's rules is one of the things that it's just how we do things. And we've worked really well using consensus as a model. Um, and, you know, we can document our processes really clearly. Um, it's not like we're just out here making decisions willy nilly. And so, um, so I would like to kind of propose that we, we use consensus as a model um, moving forward for decision making. Because um, it is a well established thing that we've, we've used in the past. Um, and especially if we're not bound to Robert's rules, um, I like to propose that as well. Sure, and maybe just for optics, we can call it Roberta's Rules of Order. We have a woman <laughs> Latinx person. I think that's, yeah. Okay, we can the old way um, <laughs> I, um, And I'm good with work with operating by consensus. Um, it gets us where we need to be. Um, I think that we'll, if we did have like a, a very important thing uh, that maybe the consensus is uh, in, the, in this context of COVID in particular, that we might do a roll call to see where consensus is. Yeah. Um, but I think we can make it work for what we need, right? We can use yes. shift it as what we need. So we could just tentatively call it Roberta's rules of order. Sorry, it's rules of order. Um, so on this consensus building piece, um, should we go ahead and do we need to do a roll call right now for this being this is how we're going to operate going forward? This is Ellen. Can we look at the group norms we'd already established and see if we want to adopt those as the CARES group norms as well? Um, Ellen, I'm happy to bring them up. Um, are you referring to the art team group norms or right. the, okay, art team? Ooh, I know I have that somewhere, y'all. Just give me one moment. And, and I just want to take take this opportunity to say thank you to Paula and Will for, for, for giving us this opportunity to kind of challenge some assumptions about how we're working as a group. And I think what's really important and valuable is to recognize that there are structural things that remain in place because of the way that, because of the way that uh, the bylaws work. And we can recognize that the bylaws are going to dictate certain things but that it doesn't mean that it has to define the culture of how we function. So it's nice, it's great to have that affirm that it can be a both end, right? Mm. Well, thank you for getting us all aligned in the right direction. There's gotta be some um, a strong foundation in order for the work that needs to come out of this committee um, to get done. And then we're going to really do the work awesome because we're going to be aligned and we are working with each other in that. While Grace finds that, Tara, I just wanted to kind of mention um, about the training. I think we're all obviously COVID got us really good um, and a lot of things have been canceled, but I think we're all um, I know Grace just sent something out to the whole commission about the training, the Saturday training that's coming up in September, October. So I think that we'll start to see um, some traction coming along with the other commissioners. Is that, is that, uh, I just have a question about that, Paul. Is that the local training or is that the nationally off training that they're doing? Uh, because they did one two weeks ago as well, the intro to systemic racism. Uh, and that was all offered online. One that's coming up is online. And it's national. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, no, that's, the, that's the second in a series. Okay. 
Um, and yeah, just to, to clarify, John, um, we offered both the the CNN, like the local CNM one day virtual trainings, and then yeah, also the Crossroads National uh, Saturday session. Um, I know we actually we had a conversation um, with Crossroads about something else, and they were like, "Hey, just so you know," so we were thankful for that. Those national ones sell out fast because I've I've worked with a number of organizations that I'm trying to get to those trainings. On this one, so yeah, jump on it if folks are going. At a, they better register soon. Also, um, is this is this the are these the norms that you're pulling up, Grace? I think that document was drafted in 2018 because I just tried to find it. Um. So the, the one with the group norms. So when did we, okay, I saw group norms for the care team. When did we draft those? So that visual, I believe was decided on in our March, 2020 meeting. Yes. And was that not adapted from the yeah. thing? Yeah, I mean. It was. So maybe we should look at that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, yeah, let's make sure that we're aligned on those and let's think about where we are now and and ask what's missing. Does it does it cover everything? Okay, so we're going to the visual. Yes. Mm -hmm. Nope. Okay. I'm sorry, would someone mind reiterating? That one is fine. That one is the one. This is the one we. Okay. So I think I have the art team board report, which includes the charter and scope of the group norms visuals that was adopted by the care committee in March 2020. And then I also have the guy or the guidelines that were adopted. Um, in May or June um, by the committee. Uh, so whatever anybody wants to look at, I can bring up for you. So along with this visual, I'd like to offer that under working structure and process in the report, item seven, which is the last, and I'm looking at the updated report, probably doesn't make any difference, but. Oh, okay, let's see. Oh, oh, yes, okay. Terry, what page is that on? 10. 10? Okay. Yeah, right there at the bottom. Okay, fantastic. Just, just to call that out and like, Trey, I know you don't, you know, you're, you're knee jerking on the equity lens thing, but um, I think this is. No, I, I think it's important. I, I, it's just the buzzwords. <laughs> it's I know, running right. around. I it's know. like. <laughs> yeah, again, right. I'm, I'm just, I'm just messing with you. But I think this is, I think this is an important item to call out um, in terms of how we stay focused on the work at hand um, and how we help um, group dynamics and power dynamics get managed. I think this helps do that while we're waiting for everybody to, to get oriented in a shared analysis, shared conversation through training. Um, okay, so any further discussion on group norms? I know there's another bullet point and 
which was very present in my mind to call out. But I think from, from my perspective, and this is not to uh, uh, dissuade anyone, but from my perspective, um, I think I'm really interested and encouraged now to, to see how the dynamics between the three segments of the group, which are the commissioners, the committee members, and the staff, how we all plug into each other and become a more congruent, more organic group, um, which I wasn't feeling coming into this meeting, but I feel much more um, th that hopeful that we can become more of a functioning um, whole, holistic approach to what we're trying to get done. Terry, but, may, may I ask uh, you why, why, why that feeling ensued? Because of what uh, Jonathan called out is we felt the loss of our agency. I, there, there have been times when I felt very managed. And so I felt it, you know, it just was present in my, in my mind as a question to, to have ready to ask. Um, and so, and now I no longer feel the need to ask that. I'm willing to see things work out and roll out um, rather than make a, make a big deal out of it. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for asking. So that takes us to communication and communication and leadership kind of go hand in hand in this particular conversation. So um, communication, the way the art team um, used communication, which we had meetings, of course, and we had caucusing, of course, and we had um, quote unquote, not really subcommittees, but teams, we had information that we needed to dig into, which produced the environmental scan and thus the report. And so we communicated in that way, but we also communicated interpersonally. Um, and that has come up in terms of, you know, again, we, we've been very kind of blindsided by the, the bureaucratic stru committee structure. We can only do this then. Um, or we can only do it in this way. So we, we just talked about reminding ourselves that communication is important inside the committee and outside the committee, committee, especially when it comes to starting to dig into actual stuff, the, the actual work. We'll need to be able to communicate outside of this particular group um, in terms of the, the, the care meeting. Uh, and so we just kind of reiterated that amongst ourselves. And so it's, it's on the list as, as an item that we discussed. So I'm just want to make sure if there's any commenting that we need to do here that we have a, have the opportunity to do so. I, I also, want to, also want to bring up the fact that we talked about being able to share resources. Um, and I think, honestly, I think that that's a good Sharing resources, I feel like, can really go a long way to um, to bridging what I see as a as a as a um, as a gap in analysis. Um, so I think that that's I think that that could be part of it as well. So Terry, what I'm also hearing from you is that because the need to have communication outside of the standing committee meeting is necessary that conversation needs to continue regardless so what i'm wondering is that maybe then as conversations come out of that just like how you guys have identified here probably based on some recent conversations then we put these we can add them to a formal agenda or we can do um the whole facilitating the discussion around x y and z just like you're doing now i don't know what are you thinking well, I, and that's why I said that this lays right into leadership, because as Will pointed out, um, if you look under leadership, one of the models, and with this is, these are just, you know, thinking outside um, the box, one of the models we considered, we suggested is just what he um, uh, described, which is, you know, we have the two co-chairs who are members of the commission, and you all are um, there, you know, you govern the meeting formally, but the guts of what the committee does is done through the facilitated conversation. 
Um, and that's kind of where we, we landed as one of the two. And sounds like it's, it's beginning to sound like a good fit in just in my opinion. Um, so to, to answer the, the question that you've asked is the communication in terms of that facilitation within the, the care meeting and then any, like, for example, the, um, the priorities list that would then become a body of work that the facilitated conversation would then take on. And then if we needed to meet outside and to dig into that document or dig into any particular structure, any particular project or item, then that's the communication that would then flow into that situation. So it's if we we would be in formal committee structure, we'd be doing subcommittee work or work group work, which that term for me sounds feels better. Um, but it's just being able to have those conversations where, um, you know, and who should be included, that's, that's up for discussion. It's not just, you know, the care team as a whole, you know, it's a whole group. So the facilitated discussion that is project or item specific outside of the care team meeting could then still include uh, one or two staff persons, one or the other, or both commissioners, but it's, just a, it's our discussion of the work that we're trying to get done. And if somebody has a shorter description of what I just said, please, <laughs> please. Oh, that, that model, this is Ellen, that model worked well with our report because we broke into groups that of two or three people that looked at specific items that we wanted to research and work on, right? And then brought it all back together into one report. So I guess the, the um, to kind of address both is, can it work if we take the model of co-chairs being the um, liaison between the care team and the board and being that govern, governance um, presence in the room, in the meetings, and then have a facilitator facilitating the conversation and then taking items to be worked on outside into a separate gathering for that discussion, is, is that okay? Is there an objection to that? Does it violate anything? Can we, can we do that? Will, does it violate anything? I don't see any reason why we can't do that. Yeah, I'd say let's go for it. Let's try it and see it. We can reassess it in three months to see if it works or six months, just why not? Um, to add to that, I will say our lawyers said as long as two commissioners are not in the room together discussing things outside of a public meeting, then by all means. Cool. All right, team, any other? I'm, gonna say, I'm sure we can also develop, um, I'm sure we can also subcommittee if we need to formally. Well, that, that is the official end of the list that I have submitted just as a guide as talking points based on what we had discussed. So um, I'm going to stop talking now. I do think we want to consider what our next steps from here, right? Jonathan, why don't you why don't you talk about next steps? I'm kind of curious to see what you guys are thinking. We should be doing that. We we've done a lot of talking about what we're how we're going to talk. Maybe we could talk about what we're going to talk about. Um, it's a great question. I mean, I guess from my own from my own like sort of uh, battled mind, I would uh, argue that maybe it would be. Uh, 
I mean, one thing that might be great would be for um, maybe sort of a member of the art team and a commissioner to kind of put their heads together to codify some of the things that we just talked about so that there's kind of maybe, or maybe it's one art team member, one commissioner, one staffer to come together and sort of codify some changes that we're talking about and then push those back out to the to the team for review before the next meeting so that would be one suggestion and then the other is to think about how do we uh to invite a, a, dis a very quick discussion on what is the best next step for assessing the priorities and determining how that drives the work so that what's happening is, is we have two things moving forward at the same time, shifting the culture of the work that we're doing and then uh, drilling down into the work at the same time. Um, I have a recommendation about the priorities list. Is it possible um, if we develop, we just assigned a group of people to take on the work of combining the priorities that are similar. So I saw a lot of overlap as well. Um, and I'm not, I don't think I'm alone in that based on what I've heard. I agree. I'm happy to volunteer to be a member of that group. Anyone else? John, thanks for volunteering. I, I'd like to add to that, not just to combine the priorities, but perhaps to make a recommendation for what we do. And we can we can discuss it from your all's recommendation as a group um, and then start working on the priority. This not is fun. I'd be happy to volunteer also. Thank you, Ellen. Thank you, John, too. Our next meeting is scheduled for August the 5th. Do you think that we should have this as a, um, as something that we discuss at that next meeting? I would love us to be able to discuss. It's uh, roughly two weeks, right? I would hey, say- John? <laughs> I would, on, yeah, Ellen, I would say yes, but I have a work commitment that day um that i will not be able to to get out of we we'll look at another day yeah yeah let's look at another day what were you going to say ellen no i was going to say i mean if we can work on it in the next two weeks but if you're not going to be there then that's a mood point so yeah let's find a time when we can all be there great great So you're available Tuesday or Thursday that week, same we, time or, or later. Why don't we have Grayson out of Doodle? Yeah, that's a better idea. Is that the, the best way to get? Yeah, for within those, maybe that Tuesday, well, yeah, that Tuesday, Thursday, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday of that week. Okay. So Wednesday's out. Uh, Monday, Tuesday. Thursday, and do we prefer this time, or would y'all like me to offer like morning, afternoon, early evening? I'm gonna I'm gonna start teaching uh, a, in a program that's gonna last two weeks in lieu of the program that I normally I'm normally in Los Angeles in this time, and so we're doing an abbreviated program instead of the seven week program that we normally do. So we're going to be operating from three to six central. So that's the only reason I wouldn't be able to do it then, but I could do earlier in the day. Let me, I think Aaron and Megan both with their work schedules had said Wednesday afternoon was best for them. But that um, is accurate for me. Um, I work until, well, today I worked until five unexpectedly, um, but I typically work until about 4.30 the rest of the days, so. Okay. Um, and then when do you go into work? I don't know if she heard you, Grace. Oh, sorry, Megan, when do you go into work out of curiosity? 
I am going into work typically around 8.30 or 9, depending. Um, I can do earlier than that if we need to. Um, so I don't know if anybody else would want to. Uh, yeah, lunch. My work schedule may also see some shifts in the upcoming months, so I will keep you all up to date as that happens to you. Um, more availability as opposed to less. So. I'm okay with doing early morning if we need to. So. Same, I could do early morning. Me too. Or later after John's done teaching. <laughs> Um, well, if it would, if it would work, why don't I just send out like a very wide spread? Um, I'll go earlier and later than I normally would. Um, and, uh, I think, uh, as one of my colleagues, uh, put in a meeting previous this week, she works different hours. So sometimes the offbeat time is the best time. As a person who meets with her during those offbeat hours. <laughs> So yeah. Excellent. I would say I'm willing to follow Nicole Robinson in anything she does. So excellent. I will work on getting that out to y'all though. Um let's see. The only thing I will say is we are starting to bump up against um public notice deadlines. Um so I will try to get that out to y'all as soon as possible. Um, I just need uh, to have sent it out seven days in advance. Um, also, would y'all like to be on that email? I would love that. Yes, yes. I will just, I will add y'all to my massive group email on that front. Um, okay, excellent. For all the coordination, Grace, I really appreciate it. I know it is no small task. Hey, Grace, on the, um, on the codifying changes discussed in the meeting, I, I'll be glad to volunteer um, for Roberta's rules of order or whatever we end up calling it. I can help on that as well. Sorry. Thanks, Landis. Oh, wait, wait, was that you, Alandis? Oh, cool. Thank you, Alandis. Janine, can you help us with this? Absolutely. Sign me up. Thanks for volunteering. Just kidding. <laughs> Are there any other next steps or points of discussion? But here, is someone saying something? I missed them. I just said I'm good here. Okay, thank you. Is there any other business that we need to discuss this evening? I don't think so. I think we're good. Okay. Um, I then believe that this completes the business of this meeting. And I need someone to make a motion to adjourn. So moved, Mrs. Terry. Thank you. A second. Second. Well.
All right. Thank you all. Meeting is adjourned. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you so much. See you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you guys. Bye-bye. Thanks, Grace.